In that, what you see there is stratocumulus associated with cold air advection. Notice on the horizon how clear it is. That means there's a lot of mixing in this environment, and that's due to the modification of the air mass over warm ground, forming convective currents, bringing warm air up to about two to 3,000 feet, and cold air from the main level of cold air advection down to the surface. It is a gusty environment, and let's take a look at that on the sounding. So there you go, that's the corresponding sounding. The coldest level located about right here, that's gonna be at about three to 4,000 feet. That's about where the strongest cold air advection is. And it's down in this layer where we have the modification taking place. The top of the frontal layer located up here about six to 7,000 feet. And this is all kind of a mild, in fact, it's part of the tropical layer overlying the cold air. And if we bring this air down somewhere in between the moist and dry adiabatic rate, the dry adiabatic rate kind of like that, the moist rate not plotted on here, but that's going to be about like that. That gets us into the ballpark of about 15 to 20 Celsius, which is in the 60s. And this time of year, that's going to be tropical air. And another interesting observation, this looks a lot like what we saw yesterday on the soundings in Pennsylvania. So it's kind of a similar situation, although it's just not as cold. The surface chart for this afternoon shows an active frontal system in the southeast U.S. However, I think it's more useful to focus first on the high pressure areas. That may seem counterintuitive. However, these high pressure areas tend to identify the air masses. So all across the southeast U.S. into the Midwest, this is all a polar air mass. And we can see how that polar air feeds into the backside of that system in Mississippi and Alabama. In the western U.S., we have this modified Pacific air mass. Part of it is acting like a plateau high across Utah and Colorado. That's a very mild, I should say a very cool air mass. And it looks like that's driving some cold air into the desert regions. And you can see the winds at Las Vegas out of the north, and we have an offshore flow there at Los Angeles and San Diego. So this is a dormant front lying on the west coast, but it looks like it's about to hook up with the next incoming system out in the Pacific. And then taking a look up in Canada, things are getting a little bit active the pressures have come up significantly in the eastern Canadian Arctic, 1040 millibar high, and that represents the Arctic air, very deep air mass out there over Baffin Island, and some of it extending into Quebec. And you can see this warm nose coming into the Northwest Territories and Nunavut. Pretty warm for that part of the country. You can see this 18 degree reading and even this zero degree reading here is a big change from the minus 50, I think it was minus 51 that we saw at Pelly Bay. So quite a warm up in that part of the continent. So our air mass structure this afternoon reveals the frontal system down there in the southeast U.S. We place the fronts on the south side of that gradient, so that's going to run about like that kind of putting that in the troughs there, and warm front extending across Tallahassee and Jacksonville. Occluded front coming up through southwestern Alabama into the occluded low located north of Jackson, Mississippi. Up to the north, there's the air mass source region. You can see that there's very little thickness contrast, and that underscores the very homogeneous nature of that air mass. In other words, from Winnipeg, all the way down to Detroit, it's basically the same air mass. Another frontal gradient located right here, thermal gradient. And in this case, I found that front a little bit further south down along the coast and then leads up into that warm front off the west coast. Some snow showers moving through Montana and Yellowstone Park. 
This is probably an upper level disturbance. You know, we don't see much going on at the surface. A little bit of troughing here. So let's take a look and see what's going on. And there it is. Looks a whole lot different on the upper level chart. So we see troughing right in this area, but the vorticity field indicating very sharp curvature and shear right there. And that indicates that the strongest lift should be in eastern Idaho in Salt Lake City area at 12Z. So that's going to be earlier this morning. So by mid-afternoon, you can see that puts it right in that area of Montana and northern Wyoming. And it looks like by tonight we get this closed low. That first lead wave appears to rotate around to the north, and then a couple of other small waves working through the flow. So things should be kind of unsettled in eastern Wyoming and eastern Montana this evening. We can see the corresponding upper level low. Remember how we talked about at the surface, it was just north of Jackson, right in this area? It looks like it's vertically stacked because the 500 millibar low is about right there. That's pretty close to vertical. So that's going to be the barotropic low, the occlusion north of the triple point. And that triple point is located right out here, close to the jet axis, which is right there. And then we find the cold front and warm front south of that jet. So once again, everything is consistent. And that's what we look for when we do the analysis. Now, one other thing we've had take place is a sudden stratospheric warming event that tends to occur annually. And we're looking at the northern hemisphere here. This is the polar regions. We're up at 10 millibars, which is about 100,000 feet off the ground. And we're back at December 15th. So we go forward through the holidays and you can see that purple shade, the minus 75, minus 80, holds on. And then suddenly when we get up just after New Year's, it starts going away. Look at that shrink. And in its place, we've got this area of warm temperatures, minus 25 instead of minus 70 Celsius, much warmer up at that level over Siberia. And it tends to cross over the Arctic Ocean into Western Canada, and that's where we're at right now. Now, this is mostly a stratospheric phenomenon, but eventually it does tend to propagate downward into the troposphere, and what we see is a slowdown of these strong zonal winds and a tendency to build up high amplitude ridges and troughs. And it's possible that's what we're seeing here as we get into the 11th and 12th and 13th. Notice those zonal winds are disrupted and we get more of these short wavelength high amplitude troughs and ridges. And that will probably lead us into a change in the general patterns as we get into the second half of January. So looking out over the southeastern U.S., we have our frontal system occluded low in Mississippi at this hour. And the main baroclinic low down to the south, it appears that's just north of Pensacola. So that puts the cold front down to the south, the warm front kind of trailing off towards the east, towards Tallahassee, and the occluded front extending up into Mississippi. Now one thing that's significant is that there is dry air up to the north. You can see these dew points in the 20s. And I'm going to take you to a sounding profile in Georgia, say right around this area here. And we'll just click on this area up in the northwest part of Georgia. And you can see that there is significant dry air in the lower levels. Most of our dynamic processes producing precipitation are up at this level. That's going to be a lot of altostratus and nimbostratus. And down below it, drier air. What that means is that there's going to be prolific wet bulbing taking place. You've basically got precip coming down into that dry layer. That's going to evaporate and produce evaporational cooling. And also, the presence of that dry air allows the wet bulb temperature to be much colder than normal. In fact, let me plot that wet bulb temperature. It's going to be this line right in the middle. And you can see that it's below zero 
all the way down to just above the surface at about 1,000 feet. So even though temperatures are above freezing all the way up to six or 7,000 feet, this is going to support frozen precipitation coming down almost all the way to the surface. And that's a big reason why ice pellets have been reported in parts of Alabama, even with temperatures in the 40s today. So the cooling as that weather system approaches is in part due to the wet bulbing taking place beneath the precip layer. And also this points to a kind of a delayed onset of precipitation is that Virga goes through the process of moistening the lower levels, raising the dew point and wet bulb temperatures down there, and eventually that makes it easier for that precip to reach the surface. The high resolution rapid refresh model showing that most of it does remain liquid, even though wet bulbing is taking place. However, as we go forward with time, a few spots of snow and mixed precip show up in the northern tier counties of Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina going into tonight. So putting that together and looking at the general weather forecast, lots of cold air across the eastern U.S. And that weather system down in Alabama and Georgia will interact with that to some extent. However, it is moving off into the Atlantic and will be out of the picture by Saturday. Cold air settles in across much of the country, just a gradual reinforcement of cold air as it oozes southward. However, in Texas, return flow is setting up. So we're going to see warm air advection get established in that part of the country. But the main cold front still well to the south. So that warm front is going to take time to move up northward. But before it does, look at that thermal packing out there in Utah on Saturday. That's an, our next weather system coming out of the northwest U.S. And you're going to see that active area come into New Mexico and develop further before that warm front can move northward. And here is where we're at for Saturday night. There's the cold front. There's the warm front still south of the Rio Grande. And to the north we have an occlusion going back into eastern New Mexico. North of the warm front, extensive warm air advection will set up. So at 850, you're going to see some pretty strong flow coming up over that cold dome. And since there is a cold dome down below, that's going to mean isentropic lift. So we're going to get a scent of some fairly humid air, and things should be cold enough to produce some wintry weather. We're looking for most of the snow impacts to be up in the panhandles around Lubbock and Amarillo. In fact, I think maybe the model has trended a little further north. However, it is going to drag that area of wintry weather, possibly through the Dallas area, into Waco and into East Texas. So we'll be watching for that here. Back behind it, here's the cold air mass driving in on the backside, pretty similar to what we have today. And then things end up on Monday being about where they're at today. So yet another system down to the south, a little bit more snow involved in parts of Mississippi and maybe Georgia. Looks like now it's starting to interact with some warm air. And this was expected originally to go up into the northeast U.S. and become a nor'easter, but the GFS and the European model have backed off on that. In fact, let's see what the European model is doing. So we just may be out of the woods on that, but while we're at it, we're going to look at this European model and compare the precip fields to see how they compare. European going a little bit further south, almost to the Midland area, dragging that precip, the snow and mixed precip through the Abilene area and into Waco and Dallas. So pretty good agreement with the GFS, bringing snow and mixed precip all the way into Louisiana maybe just north of Baton Rouge, and then crossing into Mississippi, and then we get the interaction with the moist tropical air. And it backs off a little bit. And then for the northeast U.S., European models still looking for some snow up there in New York and Philadelphia, a little bit further north than the GFS. And bringing it up into Boston for Tuesday night. 
Then the next system, you'll notice that we can't really see the thickness fields on the European model for whatever reason, we don't have the complete fields. However, I do see a little bit of precip in Wyoming next Friday. So we really need to back off and go back to the GFS to see what's happening. These thickness fields are very important for systems crossing the Rockies. So I'm bringing it back up to Friday. Yeah, things are active up there. You can see all the detail that we're missing by not having that thickness field. See all that strong thermal packing up to the north? This is going to be a new system coming south. Looks like a front kind of set up like that right there. Maybe an occlusion out towards Minnesota. But this is kind of an Alberta clipper that's found a little bit further south than where we normally see it. So that's going to mean probably some snows there for Colorado. And let's see, that drive southward. And it looks like it just gets undercut by this strong ridge. But that's a pretty good hit of uh, cold air coming southward. 528 decameters coming all the way down to Texas and 510s up to the north. The GFS does have a cold bias, but we're starting to get within that 200 hour range. So maybe this is tied to that sudden stratospheric warming, letting some of that cold air down as the zonal components start to diminish. So I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but it is a possibility as we get into the middle of January. And that's about all I got for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thanks to our new supporters. No new supporters since December 27th. How is that possible when we had 5,000 views late last week? Well, I guess that will forever be a mystery. But if you want to see these videos keep coming, we need your support. Go to our Patreon link, which I'll put up right here, and support us. It would be very much appreciated. Okay, until tomorrow, we'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.